This is Jeremiah. He's back. He's black. He's on the attack. He's brown. Sometimes he acts like a clown. <laughs> hey, I can rhyme. Maybe I'll get a million dollar contract from Pepsi. Jeremiah, are you on fire? Let's get going as we look into what is faith and and why don't you digitalize it for us, Jeremiah, so we can keep track of everything. Let me share with you. This is a living organism. You know, I can I can take all those hundred plus concepts we just went over, precepts, and I can line them up and digitalize them, and I might do that, but probably not this year. My year my year is already lined up. Um, we're just about ready to go through whoo, quite a few books here. So and um, and I will not go through those books for another two years. Now we will re we will reference those books, but we will not go through the books. And that's one way to limit this ministry. Okay, I, I can limit all these videos and people scrolling for a hundred years, and that's what I'm going to do here. I look forward to having a live broadcast and then just chucking it. Because the foundation will be in stone, you know. Uh, repent and be baptized it, 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 it's we're done. For the kingdom of God is at hand. We're done. Okay. Faith in Christ, Jeremiah, what is that? Well, faith in Christ is basically being a, a scientist. And let's talk about that for a moment. When you become a Christian, you are now a, a disciplinary person, and now you're getting into different sciences. You're getting into psychological science. You're getting into physical science. You're getting into history of science. You're getting into everything that's basically factual, and then, then you can build a foundation. Uh, let, let, let me give an example. I have a lot of Babylon over here in my, in my popcorn box over here, where I have a couple of thousand scriptures that are just random, and I threw in a lot of psychology in there, and and Darwinism uh, repair and things and, and Freud criticism and stuff like that and I look forward to working that on that probably at the end of this year we might dab into it a little later on this year but we will not get into it whole hog um, okay I wanted to share some of these um, higher academic principles with you pertaining to uh, uh, various classes, various subjects, of which I have some knowledge and some acumen in those areas. Especially the young people who are Christians, so that we can safeguard them and they can have some ammunition in reality before they face the fake reality, okay? Which is basically what I did when I dropped out of college and went back. By the time I went back, I was a semi-biblical intellectual based upon hard work. Not, not, not because I'm smart or anything, but it just, I worked. I studied. You know, be student, overachieves. There you go. That's the idiom. Now, Jeremiah, let's get going as we look at faith and why this is confidence in science. This is an introduction to 5.0. Now, I have 5.0 here as going over the dictionary and basically what the word belief means and, and, and just sharing a dictionary kind of perspective and then creeping into what the Bible calls belief, okay? Once again, once I get done with this, I'm donezo, you know, I'm, I'm done. I will refer to these lessons and these digits, but unless I revise them, it's in stone, 
and I will refer to them as we go through our Bible, Bible books and April showers. Those are the two things that we do here that, we, that, I, that I guarantee we're going to get a little complicated here. We're going to add subjects. We might even define whether it's a linking verb, you know, and, and a predicate nominative. But I doubt if we do any of that. I'm just telling you that, that you know, we're not monkeying around here. And everyone who joins this, uh, 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 this team here, I think, I think it's going to be very beneficial for you. A lot of you, this can be supplemental, and that might be a good idea for you. You know, you have a normal church to go to. Some of you might be locked into a drug cartel. Some of you might be in Sharia law where the women can't show their legs without being beaten uh, severely or something. I don't know where you are. Women aren't that much respected in, in, in India that much either. I have some friends from India. I didn't like the way they talked. Some people like to paint Indi Indian culture as something that's uh, harmless. Uh, you know what I say to that? Poo-poo. Do I love Indian people? That's not my point. One of my best friends in, uh, when I worked at Ford Aerospace was an Indian. Or he came from India. His name was Khan. Very nice guy. But I didn't like the way he talked about women and stuff. About the culture. No. It was horrible. I don't want Indian culture here. In, in terms of whole hog. We, I don't want it. Keep it out of here. You say, oh, that sounds harsh. And you're being ethnocentric. No, I'm just, I just have a brain. Uh, why don't you put it that way? You, you can use whatever term you want to use. But they are not Ten Commandment people. Uh, I got news for you. Most of the world is not Ten Commandment people. They're not Ten Commandment people at all. You know, that, that's why when Trump and these politicians say, let's make America great again, well, listen. Uh, even though I'm not politically involved, per se, uh, I'm down with you making the Constitution popular again. Because the Constitution reflects my religion. Okay? I, I just communicated with a Hindu politician, and I told them that I think you're making a fool out of yourself coming here to America and espousing Hinduism. And, 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 I, and I think that you're doing yourself a disservice. And as far as your soul goes, you, 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 Americans, America was not made for Americans to be comfortable. The Declaration of Independence is not a correct document. It's a nice document in general. But it's not an accurate document whatsoever. Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin... They're not Christian accurate people. They're evidently very nice people. We don't necessarily mind them being politicians, but we don't want them teaching uh, Sunday school or Bible study. I'll say it again for those of you who are hard of hearing. I do not want Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, uh, uh, um, Matthew Howard, you know, Hancock, or any of these guys, Lafayette, I don't want any of them teaching Sunday school or church. They're, they're, they're not qualified. And you can listen to, you can listen to them talk, and you can read, you can read the Declaration of Independence, and you can easily ascertain that they really don't know what they're talking about, when they're talking about God. Now, when they talk about government and talking about how they, they want to form a government that's superior to the, to the British government, okay, we might agree with that. Go for it. But trying to discuss matters pertaining to owning your soul and, and this, no, no, no. Okay, freeze, Benjamin, you know. You're not Benjamin, you know, the son of Jacob. Benjamin Franklin is not Benjamin, the son of Jacob. 
I guarantee. He doesn't know Bible doctrine. Now, Franklin's an interesting character, but he obviously was a very nice guy, and a lot of things he had to say about establishing a government, we Christians agree with. However, he, he can't, he's not teaching you oh, the real heart of, of America. And let me share this with you. The real heart of America is not the Declaration of Independence. The Declaration of Independence is supposed to lead you to a church. You, you came to this country, if you're an immigrant or otherwise, and you're born in this country, you're, you were born here and brought here for not an opportunity to be free in your human body. And that's called the wrong answer. You were brought here to get saved. In the process, we who live here, we seek to make a country that is conducive to peace. That's William Penn's goal. There's nothing wrong with that goal. But if you start talking too much, you're going to make a mistake when you don't know Bible doctrine. Trump does it all the time. A lot of these guys, they, they, they make mistakes all the time, but a lot of people are going to be tolerant of that because they know that that person is going to do a decent job in running the government. I mean, two of the most prominent uh, presidential candidates, uh, both of them say that being rich is okay and it, it's coolio, you know. That's not biblical at all. That's called wrong answer. So as far as them uh, being wise people, no. Uh -uh. They're not necessarily very wise people at all. But they do have some wisdom, and a lot of people are going to support them. And, and, and if I was voting, I would probably vote, to be, vote for the person who is probably the best candidate. But obviously they're not going to be perfect. That's another point, right? So let's get this. Um, here's another beautiful shot here in the sky on top of the clouds. Let's take a look at that. Matthew chapter 6 was, this is where I am in my, one of my Bible lessons here. I have about four Bible lessons going on right now. And one of them is to go to this scripture here um, any day now. I have to go to this one. Which is, of course, uh, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. I don't like this translation, but we'll, we'll live with it for now. Today's trouble is enough for today. So there you go. That's good wisdom from the master. By the way, as we get into faith here, now, I was told, I was told that the higher you go, the more curve of the earth you see, and that's why you don't see a curve in the earth. Listen, don't try to contradict or fool a mature Christian man. It's not going to work. Can you go any higher than this and look at the earth? Yeah, but you're, you're, you're awfully high here. Do you see a curve at all? No, there is no curve in the earth. They always use curved lens. That's why NASA uses curved lens all the time. Obviously, you can tell I'm not a fan of NASA. I'm not saying that everything they say is lies or everybody who was in the organization is lies. Uh, I just worked with a pastor who worked with NASA. And, and when I started talking negatively about them, uh, I was not his friend on, on that subject, but here's the point. Don't try to tell an artist that the earth is curved if he's a good artist. Don't do it. Because he knows it's not curved. Artists have to keep track of the horizon. I've been an artist basically off and on for, for, my, for, 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 for my whole life.
I have movies made up to 1916. Are there any curves in the water or on the landscape? I don't care where the camera is. I don't care how high the camera is. I don't care how wide the, 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 uh, the lens is. There, there is no curve. So all of a sudden in 1960, I'm seeing curves now. Okay, well common sense tells you that if, if from 1935 to 1960, everything is straight, all of a sudden, that means that somebody is bending the lens. That means that somebody is lying now. There's some sort of conspiracy going on, and the point is, is that the evidence is right there. Let's move on from science and get back to uh, um, um, faith, because some people tell me, why do you have faith in your science lesson? Well, what are you looking at right there? The evidence is right there. That's the horizon of the earth. Okay? Let tomorrow take care of itself. How many people in this world, especially in America, how many people should have had confidence in tomorrow and the Lord taking care of them and not worry and freak themselves out, which is one of the main principles of Matthew 6? Husband and wife, argue over money, argue, argue, worry, worry, argue, argue. They're not spiritually Christian mature people. Mature Christian people are not going to argue about tomorrow because they know that Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow. So they're disobedient to the commander, Jesus Christ. And what can we do but pray for people who just don't take the commands of the Lord Jesus Christ? That's why it's called living bread, because you're going to live better if you eat these ideas. If you put your confidence in being a kind person, you're going to live better. That's the point. So, Jeremiah, what is the science you keep talking about? Christianity is science, where now you're going to learn to reject the lies that you used to embrace. That's what the potter's wheel and the altar are for. We just read Isaiah where the Bible says that God is going to fix the world with burning. He's going to burn the dross, the lies, out of your life. As a developmental situation, of what we would call, um, what's the word we use in this ministry? Perfecting. As Paul said, you're being perfected. When you go through problems as a Christian in general. Another word for the potter's wheel. Another word for the altar. Another word for basically God is working on you and he's going to do a few things. And it, 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 may, it may be, it will probably be very uncomfortable at times. That's a, that's, a, that's a very simple American kind of way of verbalizing it. Okay, you got that? Now we're going to move on to all of this science you're going to embrace, and you're going to reject science fiction. When I went to college, they kept giving me science fiction over and over again. Science fiction pertaining to psychology. Science fiction pertaining to logic. Science fiction pertaining to a lot of things. On every subject, they, they, they kept giving me lies and fiction. And, and they were a lot of people were amazed at, at, at my forehead and, and how I was not really worried about much of anything. I, I remember one time in a classroom... And this can speak to some of you kids out there, your teenagers especially, when you stand up for Jesus and they go, and they, they might laugh at you or something, whatever. You know, you, you know I, I basically told them one day that, uh, I think I told them this, but I, I, I intimated it at least, I suggested, I, I'm ready to go have a Whopper right now, burger with fries and a soda. 
And that's what's on my mind right now. As far as how many people are mentally retarded in this classroom, it doesn't have nothing to do with me. If all of you decide to go to Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco and jump off the bridge, that would be very sad, but I'm not going to jump off with you. And a lot of young, young people out there, you need to listen to what I'm saying. Because uh, social pressure can be pretty tough on people, uh, you know, but it, it, I had two parents who taught, who taught me to be tough, and, and, and I learned to be tough quick. You know, uh, So I had, I had parents that taught me to be tough and, and make a stand. Then I had some Bible preachers. Then I had the Holy Spirit of, of Jesus Christ talking to me and speaking to me personally. To be bold and to just go. When you're in the right, you should be bold and not back down. Now, well, I'm here to help you so that you know how to be in the right. And one of the ways is for you to be open to all the different subjects that are in the Christian faith, and that takes us to number two in this ministry, which is sound doctrine. Now we're talking about faith right now, and I don't want to complicate things, but faith is having confidence in sound doctrine and true principles and science. And I have all the subjects here, most of them in your Bible, here for you, and I approach every subject from a scientific perspective. And I will have some psychology here, a little bit uh, pertaining to some of these subjects. Then later on this year, I'll probably give you some Freudian principles and some psychology and tell you how it's wrong and how it might be right. That's how deep this ministry is and how I stick to business here. And, and not, not having time to talk about Esther and Noah too much and the animals and, and all of this, and that's what's going to afford me the opportunity to get really deep into basics, into truth and science, okay? Such as looking at this picture here. I have a movie called Northside 777, and the guy says, They used to say the earth was flat. And, and, and the painting right behind his head is a big giant oil painting. And the horizon is flat. And the horizon is probably about 10 miles. You're looking, you're looking at here at least a 100 mile left and right horizon. I would say probably close to woo, 150 miles here on this wide, wide screen. Uh, this picture you're looking at right now. That's the horizon, and I'll give you a guarantee, there's no curve there. Uh, uh, Wikipedia, Wackypedia, says that the Earth has a, has a one-inch curve every mile. Do you see a one-inch curve there at all? Why not? You told me, they told me there is. So my, only, my simple conclusion is, they don't know what they're talking about, they're mentally retarded, science-wise, science or they're just straight up liars, and that's the case. There can only be two conclusions here. I'm going to shut down for a short video. As we get into 5.0 here, talking about an introduction into faith and confidence, and basically Christianity is you're going to stop flights of fantasy. You know, Einstein kept saying, imagination, imagination. Einstein made quite a few serious errors, and I also think that he wasn't being honest when he said that Oppenheimer could split the atom and create some sort of bomb. He said he might be able to do it. He didn't say he, he could do it. I don't think he ever did it. And I, I think they were, they were lying. That's my opinion. I have a right to that opinion. And I also think that they've never had an atomic bomb. And I think that it's one big giant conspiracy. And I think it's all nonsense. And, and I'm sticking to that. And I've always had that opinion. 
Uh, you don't have to agree with me, but um, I'm sticking to my opinion, you know. Just like if you try to tell me the earth is round, I'll tell you I don't see a round earth. And when you show me one, I can guarantee that the lens is curved. How can you? I, this is all done science for me. If you tell me this picture here is is correct, and, it, and, and, I, and it, I'm assuming that is actually the ocean there, do you see a curve every mile? No, you don't. Okay, when the Bible says that the up is up and down is down, that's what it means. When you look down, you're always looking down. That's why the Bible says when you look down, you're looking down. Now let's get into 5A here uh, and wrap up this segment. So you're getting away from flights of fantasy. You're entering into reality here. You're entering into actualization is what your dictionary calls it, right? Because you don't want lies in general because lies make God angry because God loves the truth. What you're looking at, the ocean, the water, it was based upon truth. It was based upon factual science, which God is the author of. Your Father, which art in heaven. Now, before we shut down, let's go over 5.0 and, and, and what I'm going to give you, you nine synonyms for confidence and belief in Jesus Christ, okay? The first one is belief, which means you're expecting something uh, along, the, along, the line, along the lines of ideas in your head. That's what the word belief basically means. There are ideas in your head, and it lends towards that. Obviously, it can go all over the place. It can apply to all types of scenarios, but I'm going to give you the basic scenario of a term. Confidence is when you also expect something, but it's more specific. You have confidence in the Creator. You have confidence in something specific, like the word confide. Confide comes from the word impact, or two people or two parties, right? It, it, that's, that's the root meaning of that. Persuade is you've got some evidence and you're expecting something based upon some evidence. That's why we have the song I just shared with you, Blessed Assurance. Because assurance is the next term, which basically means the same thing. Persuade and assurance basically come from the idea that you have some evidence about something, but you don't have all of it, and you expect something from that source. And, and, the, and the germane idea here is that God loves you, and you feel His love, and you have confidence in Him, even though you don't understand everything about the one you love. And what He's going to do, and how He's going to do it. Persuade is evidence-oriented. Assurance is more along the lines of expecting something with evidence, but the word assurance puts some emotion in your expectation. It can get a little complicated here. Let's move on. I'll go back over this tomorrow. Trust is when you expect something and you're relying upon someone other than yourself. Which is the same thing as the next word is lean. You're relying upon someone and you are trusting in them. However, the word lean is more of a long-term condition. Trust can usually refer to something immediate or temporary. Okay? Now let's go to our last one. We, got, we have hide. Hide is very important because you expect God to hide you, rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood. What's that about? You need to be covered completely. Now, Jesus Christ has more than enough purity 
to cover you. If he wants to cover you. Dinah, just as if you never sin. No one can see your sins. No one knows anything you've done wrong. Now, that is what you're hiding under. Let's make one more point on hide. Expecting to be hidden. You're expecting to be hidden for eternity by the intermediary, Jesus Christ, between you a sinner and God being holy. That's how that works. One more point on hiding is you're trusting that you're going to remain innocent in the court because Jesus is a judge. He's always judging righteously 24-7, which means you're confident that the, that the covering that you have is going to remain. The washing away of your errors is permanent. And you're confident in that. And you expect that to be. That's very significant. The next is prompt or prop. You're expecting energy so that you can teach like I'm doing now. I'm propping up the gospel right now. I'm, I'm erecting a, a matrix of sound doctrine here for you. And the main component is living bread. Out of all the subjects that we have, the one that, that, that is most germane to you getting saved are the commandments of Jesus Christ. We really teach those in triplicate here, right? Such as repent and be baptized, such as take up your cross daily and hold on to your denial mindset. That's the center of living bread, one of the center points. Of course, you can always add uh, being pure. You can always add being caring and forgiving. And you can always add these, com these, these components which make up the substance of the bread that you eat. If you do indeed eat this bread, you will never see death. And I prop this up. I activate myself. I prick myself. I say, I say get going. It's time to prop up through the teaching. The last one is carry. We carry this. You know, I, I, I expect, I am confident and persuaded that, that I'm going to carry this. And the Lord's going to enable me to carry the gospel and to carry uh, the story of the love of Jesus to those who can receive that love. Okay? So carrying is something you're confident in, uh, but that's one of the least concepts about faith. That's more along the lines of something else. I put that in as at last because it is a, a minor part of Christian faith. Okay? Jeremiah, are you done with me? I'm done. That's it. I, I, I'm going to show you science in, in, in various ways here. Now, I, I used to teach clouds a little bit in school. I'm starting to forget the clouds, you know, stratonimbus and all of that. I, I, I need to go back over that. But uh, we're obviously on some clouds here. And, and, uh, and of course, as you can see, uh, there's no bend in, in the earth. There's No. And when I mentioned that movie, I might watch that movie tonight. That's a very good movie. Um, it, it, it has a mistake in the movie, uh, theologically, because... The man tells his wife to remarry. That's not biblical. <laughs> we have quite a few references in the New Testament that tell you that you that you can't remarry a woman as long as her first husband is alive. Here we go to Greece right now. I'm going to travel to Greece. Uh, I know the world pretty good based upon pictures. I've never traveled too much. But I do know these beautiful high-definition paint pictures here, how they show uh, wonderful places. And obviously Greece is a very wonderful place. I think the people are crowding too much there. But other than that, it's beautiful. I like it. Uh, I think you ought to space out some more, but maybe there's some security there for, uh, you know, if you need some help or something. I don't know. Jeremiah, are you one and done? That's it. 
Maranatha, Jesus is coming again. And we're getting into faith right now, which is a very important uh, kernel to this whole thing. As you, many of you know, uh, when I get done with this, I, when I finish, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let it go, but it's, it's going to be lengthy. And whoever comes to number five here, um, we're going we're, we're gonna to cap it. You can talk about faith and study faith for a million years. I'm going to give you a lot of the basics and, and, and a lot of what's uh, uh, basically re required of you. We, we focus on requirements here quite a bit. And I think we should. Especially considering the brevity uh, of, of what we're dealing with here. Okay? It's quite obvious that this is the end of the world for we who are Christian people. Everything is totally wacky. For we who are 68 years old like me, we know this is the end. Because we lived in 1965 in America, we can go to bed and not hear gunshots and sirens. You know, when I lived in Orange County, California in 1965, I never heard a siren. You never heard a siren. You, you, you might hear a siren once every six months. Because there was no crime. I think we had one murder in that town, predominantly black people, soul brothers like me, soul brothers. Uh, we had like one murder in 10 years or something. Everybody went to bed at 11 o'clock because everybody worked day shift pretty much. Uh, there was no late night TV. The TV went off at 12. Everyone had their own driveway. Nobody parked on the streets. The streets were clean. and uh, it, it's an, it was an amazing time in American history. I'm going to shut now. You can tell I reminisce too much about it because, you know, we, we older people, we miss the old America. We, we miss going to the drive-in and everybody didn't pull the drive-in speaker off the, you know, off the, you know, the, the post. You didn't worry about... You know, the drive-in, you know, you didn't worry about it. You didn't worry about, you know, uh, uh, the movie, whether it was going to be, you know, G-rated or not. All the movies were G-rated. A parent right now has to, has to really watch their P's and Q's. They have to watch out. Because America's turned into basically one big giant trash can. It's unfortunate but that's the way it is. And, and, and I'm not trying to make you sad out there, some of you young people, because when, when you get Jesus and you're in heaven and you're drinking the river of life, you're, you're, not, you're, not in, you're in good shoes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, and a lot of you need to think about that. I mean, the, the master said, don't give your crown to anyone. We just looked at that Revelation no, we didn't, we, we didn't go that far. Revelation chapter 2, Revelation chapter 3, where the master said, don't let anyone take your crown. Okay, in other words, you've got a river to go to that's pure, and it's like pure love and joy and laughter. Why would you mess with that future? Don't do it. And even some of you young people, especially you teenagers, you can get started on the right path where you can lose your crown of life. That's one reason why I'm dipping into teenagers now, where I've never really gotten into too much teenage teaching, uh, Sunday school at all here. I've never really, but, but for, for about a year and a half now, I opened this ministry where we're going to uh, give out lots of warnings and tell the young people, a lot of you out there, that, that you don't need garbage. You never needed it. That's a lie from hell. You don't need smoke, cigarettes, weed, nothing. All you need is dinner and go to bed. And get ready to be with Jesus. That's all you need. You don't need a party. You don't, need, you don't necessarily, necessarily need to travel. As a matter of fact, somebody told me they wanted to travel. I told them, Did you, do you know you basically can't travel now? I keep seeing these travel things on the web, you know. Actually, right now, you can't travel unless you want to be around bombs. You want to go to Israel? Do you know what they just did to the people in Israel, the Muslims did? 
It went across the border and threw grenades at homes. Listen, th this is not a normal circumstance here. I want to go to Israel. Well, there's bombs flying on the, the uh, you know, two, two, two cities. You want to go there? You want to go to Russia? Uh, 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 they used to have advertised, go to Russia. Well, a, a bunch of Muslims just went into a mall and, and, and machine gunned down a hundred Russians. Are you sure you want to go to Russia? My point is, is that a lot of people don't, they're not aware what's, of what's going on. Let's put it that way. I think our own government is attacking Jamaicans, I think. This government is not the government it used to be at all. We're doing all kinds of strange things. Look, 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 at, the, look at the withdrawal from Afghanistan. The, the people were so afraid of facing the new government of Muslims with their swords that they jumped on the wings of jet planes and stuck to the wings. I want to tell you something. Huh? You want to go to Afghanistan where the people are so afraid that they jump on jet wing, they jump on jet plane wings and hold on as the plane is taking off because they're that much afraid of the people who are getting ready to take over. Then the president came on TV and said the people that are taking over are gentlemen or something. That's how wacky this is. That not only are the people in charge wicked people, but they're insidious. They're saying that the, that, that the terrorists that these people are running from getting on the planes are gentlemen. Then they're saying that the parents in America who went to a PTA meeting who don't want their child having a freak walk in the classroom, they're calling them terrorists. We just looked at Isaiah where good is called bad and bad is called good. Which means God's getting ready to show up and he'll fix things. And when he fixes things, he fixes them. <laughs> As my buddy used to say, he ain't playing to use some bad grammar there that we used to use back in the day. Uh, Jeremiah, let's get going. Okay, Maranatha, Shalom. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lord Jesus Christ.